Um, so we'll jump right into it then, right? Yes. Okay. Welcome. Or to we could just wait. Yeah. Twenty minutes. But I don't know. <laughs> just, just. Oh damn. Okay. I reckon I could shit in my office bin. What do you think? Do you have an office bin, like a mesh one? I mean, I, no, I don't, I don't a... think that you know, I don't think that's worth talking about. Anyone could shit in an office bin. I suppose so. It's got quite a wide mouth. It wouldn't be much of a challenge. Unless it's really high. I said like it's a, it's a, it's a boast. It's a, it's, oh, I do have short legs, but if it's, it's not that tall. No. If it's like four foot high and you have to like get your legs off the ground and essentially plug this bin up. <laughs> to do it. It's one of the, it's one of those bins that has one of those spinny lids, so I have to kind of fire it out quite quickly in order to kind of get it through. Oh, Otherwise, I'm just shitting on top of my bin, which is, <laughs> as I'm sure you can understand, is undesirable. I hate bins with spinny lids. <laughs> they are almost entirely useless. Yes, I much prefer, they work much prefer first, bins with a pedal lid. Yeah, I don't. I find any kind of novelty bin is always kind of craps out within a few months. I don't, th- I don't understand why it can't just be a bucket. I don't think that's a novelty. Yes, that, yes, I agree. Why can't it be a bucket? Because any bin, whether it be a nice you know, designer bin, a pedal bin, that you can get for £200 or anything, it always ends up grotty, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. always ends up horrible. Yeah, I mean, that's why I just throw all my fucking diapers out of the window. <laughs> that and I, you know, I have quite a contentious relationship with my neighbour. Yes, that that and I am an anti. <laughs> my an- dirty shit covered neighbour. <laughs> Anti-social lunatic. My dirty shit covered neighbour. Well, should we start? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to the George Rockle Schmidt Show. Welcome to the Fumcat Show. This time, Fumcat is a baby and he is on a skateboard. Welcome to the George Fumcat Rockle Schmidt Show. This week, we're going to be talking about extraordinary. The Stan Romanek story. And oh my God! And ev- tell me more. And every thumb has a pirate hat. Oh, uh, okay. So, is he on one skateboard, or does is there like skateboards for each for each thumb for each cat? leg? If one thumb falls off, thumb cat does it grow another thumb cat? A thumb cat on a, on one skateboard, and thumb cat that accidentally hangs itself. Uh, there is a documentary on Netflix uh, called what? What is it? What is it called? Uh, I mean, I can tell you, but I feel like if we tell these people and they, they make the same mistake we did, we, you know, we, c- I mean, we won't be brought to bear for it, but I just think we should, you know, do the audience better than to, you know, give them the opportunity to waste their time like that. It's, co- um, it's called Extraordinary. Extraordinary, colon, the Stan Romanek story. Yes. And it's, it's bizarre because uh, I've looked this up in many different, many different places, and it's made in 2013, but it talks about him all the way up to 2017. So it's 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 a documentary made in 2013, and then it's it's been tweaked a little bit before it's been put on Netflix, I think. Right. Okay. Uh, to include the the allegations of child abuse that our subject now has to deal with and has now been convicted of. I do understand. Ah, right. Okay. Because um, as I, as I was slogging through this monstrosity. Um, I did kind of lose a lot of like I, I lost the wind of my sails towards the you know the latter half. So I all this 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 um, news of these child ag- yeah abuse a- accusations are kind of fresh to me. Um, right. I mean, is this we, one of his star babies? We really need to start at the beginning. No, I think it's just a normal terrestrial baby. Uh, I, I mean, I don't <laughs> think it is a baby. I hope it's not a baby. Um, Okay, so well, just to clear that up, he 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 was convicted of uh, possessing indecent images of children. But we really should say for the listener, um, this documentary follows a guy called uh, Romanek, Stan Romanek, who apparently is quite prolific or was quite prolific in the UFO world, and he's mm-hmm. someone who claims to have been abducted. He's someone who claims to have fathered children, um, really against his will that are a hybrid between human and whatever he is. And <laughs> it's um, the documentary follows basically... It doesn't follow anything. It's, it's basically a number of um, interviews with people who are in his social group. Many of these interviews are obviously rec- have obviously been recorded years before by someone else for something else. I think the documentary is probably less than 50% new footage. And all of, all of the new footage is is talking to Stan Romanek, who who says all this wild stuff and has no proof. 
it is literally the worst documentary I've seen in that it it makes no effort to be objective. It, it makes no effort to, to have a counterbalance. It makes no effort to even back up any assertions made by anyone. And not only that, half of this fucking documentary is text appearing on screen as if it's written by a typewriter, like a like an mm. old PowerPoint sort of transition, with no uh, no narration or anything, and just just text appearing on screen. There there is not a single use of a capital letter. I know that's a tiny thing, but <laughs> so your real what is really incensed you about this documentary is not the subject matter at all, not how earnest it is. Or bias or anything like no, that. It's, it's the grammar. It's not the grammar. It's not the. This isn't even grammar. This is basic. Use a capital <laughs> letter for people's people's names. If they, if they didn't use any other grammar, fine. If they didn't put put a full stop at the end, fine. But for God's sake, it just looks so weird. It doesn't even look bad. It just looks like a child's done it half of the time. Mm. All this all this text that isn't quite centered, and this this music that is over the over the people speaking because the person who's made it doesn't know how to mix. And, and not only doesn't know how to mix, like seemingly hasn't watched this back before pressing export and pressing the send to Netflix because they'll fucking put anything up button. Well, you know, that could be fair enough. I mean, I, 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 I think it might be a bit generous to say that a studio was behind this, but I'm sure if you're part of the team that was responsible for that, I think you'd probably want to shit it out as quickly as possible. I, I wouldn't want to deal with it too for too fucking long. I guess not. Do you, do you think there was a team? I don't think there was a team. I think it was one person. I think there, there may have been other people who've been listed in the credits, but I, I think they were people who worked on it for half a day. <laughs> I mean, seriously. And then rent... Then fucking ran. Even for even for a single person, this is it has to be it, ha- it has to be something that you could make extremely quickly. I mean, I, okay, I've never seen a documentary where it lists a cast. Oh dear! Right, and it's not a spoof because it lists Stan Romanek himself, Lisa Romanek, the Beaver Lady herself. <laughs> or, you know, I mean, sorry for me. I was foaming at the kind of mouth at this point, um, with the with my eyes rolled rolled to the back of my skull by the time the credits had kind of rolled around. So I didn't see that. That's that's quite something. Okay, so it's directed by John Sumpel. Writing credits: Jack Roth, John Sumpel. Uh huh. Produced by Jack Roth, Jamie Cernoff, John Sumpel. Music by Anton Patzner. Cinematography by John Sumpel quite a fucking stretch calling it cinematography film editing by John Sumpol production design what does that mean Patrick Lamantini hmm <laughs> it's made by one person it's made by John Sumpol and he got a couple of friends who produced it who probably drove him somewhere made some sandwiches made some sandwiches or, or prob- you, know, you know probably threw in five bucks for a happy meal well, as you do, you know. I, I, it's, it's I, only the fucking. I still, I still feel like we've we've kind of skipped out on explaining exactly what this film is. It is dreadful, but it's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, it obviously explores the happenings and uh, of Stan Romanek, but it it pretty much uh, straight up says that you know we it kind of it does say kind of straight up at the beginning that you know we will convince you that these things are fucking yeah. real, really. Um, it's like, as you will see, you know, Stan collected a lot of evidence and it is quite compelling. Yeah, I mean, at, at the end, it doesn't say these exact words, but it pretty much says, well, you've seen the vast treasure chest of evidence. It's, we haven't seen any evidence. We've some we've seen someone sit in front of a camera and lie badly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I, I'm not quite sure you what to think. He's deluded. I think, yeah, I think he is a nutcase. He's obviously, I mean, if, if he's got... If you know um, these accusations or anything to go by in terms of child abuse, he's obviously fucking deranged in the fucking head. But I, th- you know, I wasn't quite sure what to think about all this stuff. I don't whether that you know he was something that's really clever that's fabricating all this stuff for a lot of attention, or he's in the middle of this this bubble with a whole bunch of other losers, or there's someone out there that's like geniusly fucking manipulating this fucker and like torturing him from the inside of his head or something like that. Okay, well, it's, it's so bizarre. It's definitely not that one. He definitely, he definitely is the mastermind if there is such a thing. 
but, <laughs> but I, I, I agree, yeah, it is kind of like, well, is he deluded or not? But the, there's a bit in this where Stan Romanek, who claims all of this stuff, uh, is is under hypnosis. Mm-hmm. And, and he's filmed it himself, I think. And you can't see the hypnotherapist, but all, all it is is he's like laid back on Frasier's dad's lazy boy or something uh, in in someone's room. It's clearly not a proper office. And I think he's laid back and he's there going, oh, oh, the children. Oh, I've, I've fathered children with aliens. Oh, I don't want to leave the children. Oh the, and it's, oh, the world. It's like, dude, if you're going to pretend you're you're under hypnosis, maybe you should look up what hypnosis is. Yeah. Because it, like you they, laid back with your eyes closed, wailing, is not what it looks like. No, not at all. Uh, you know, clearly in your living room, and he's wearing a nice Cosby set sweater, and he's got like a cheese sandwich next to him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a cheese sandwich next to him. Yes, it is like that. Uh, it's oh, it, I did lo- it's bizarre. Oh, it is. It's very bizarre. It's 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 this weird kind of like twisted story. I don't know, uh, twisted story. Um, he. Immediately, when, like one of the first like talking heads that he does, he says like, "Well, at first, I didn't believe in uh, in aliens or UFOs or anything like that, as to kind of infer credibility. It was my wife who I met on the internet who I told about these strange things that I kind of saw, and she was like, "Yeah, it's totally aliens. You might be abducted." And then I believed. So therefore, you know it's true. So th- this guy is famous for the infamous Boo video, where an alien. <laughs> A, a, a tiny alien, like a three-foot grey, sticks its head against his window from the outside, his house window. And from the slowly outside. ambles off to the left. <laughs> or, or ducks down really quickly, so it looks like it's been stood in a trench this time. And it's oh. just... His reaction to it is amazing, because his reaction is... He's filming it like, oh, there's something outside, I don't know what it is. And then this alien, obviously it's a model, sticks its head against a window, and he goes, oh, God, what is that? What what the frack? Oh, oh freaking frickin', hell! Frickin but, oh. Stop messing with me, man! And it's like you wouldn't, if you thought for a moment that that was real, you wouldn't act like yeah. that. If if you were just if you didn't think it was real, but you were suddenly taken aback, you'd go ah, or something. Yeah, right? you yeah, you wouldn't just be kind of. So I'm making eggs in the kitchen and I'm recording myself frying some eggs in the kitchen. It's I'm two a.m. It's two a.m. I I have a normal life. I, I want to I want to convey that, that I am a very normal person. I'm not a weirdo or anything. I am not a crackpot. Uh, just filming some eggs. And oh, freaking hell. Is that a fucking... This is first contact. Freaking hell. I knew I was really special and important. I know it was true because the next day, the these people came to change the lattices on my, <laughs> uh, on my wall. And I didn't ask them to do that. And I didn't speak to my landlord about it. Then I spoke to my landlady, and she said, "Yes, we're doing this." <laughs> yeah, sorry, no, I've, I've I've kind of condensed that. But one of the like bone of contentions with these things is like, yeah. So there was this massive flash, and I keep a camera on this wall. And the next day, these guys were around, and the first thing in the morning to take it down, and I never heard why. And then it's half an hour later in the documentary, it kind of softballs in the fact that, yeah, no. So it turns out there was something wrong with the wall, and my landlady had, landlady had organised this, and I knew that was happening on this day. But for fuck's sakes. Oh, yes. I, 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 everything in in Steve Romanek's world is a conspiracy against him. He is a um, whether whether he is deluded or he does know that he's deceiving people. I think he does know he's deceiving people, but I think, I think he probably believes that he, um, he is special. It's just like he doesn't have enough proof, so he's got to fabricate it. Mm. Um, but regardless of that, he is a massive narcissist. Clearly fairly dangerous because this has been going on for years and years where he's been trying to convince people that he's starseed, which is oh God. some weird sexual fantasy he has about banging an alien with massive eyes. You know, when when he says, oh, I, I had to call up my doctor and say, why did my pills melt? Why did my pills melt? It must be aliens because someone's been melting my pills. And he, <laughs> then he's got a photo, a photo of... Um, a bottle of what turns out to be antidepressants, because I looked it up, that he's clearly melted on the stove. <laughs> now I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying that if if you're you're a depressive, if you're or if you're an, on antidepressive 
depressants. I'm not saying that you, you shouldn't be taken seriously or you're not a credible source, but I think when you're melting those pills, it kind of brings your credibility into into question. Into play, yeah, I would say so. When you're that, then you know the, 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 he he did a good job fucking melting it, and I imagine that as he was doing it, you know, he's breathing in a lot of the fucking fumes <laughs> at this point. So you can see his IQ drop. <laughs> we thought it was a stroke, but both sides of his face dropped at the same time, so we didn't know what to think. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's an interesting documentary because it's um, it's a documentary that is a piece of propaganda aimed at kind of perpetuating itself i can't really see the people behind this thinking this is going to convince anyone no I d- yeah it, it is it is quite a curious thing i guess you know the people that want to believe already fucking do yeah everything else that it could pop- possibly reach i mean they're just gonna turn their nose up as as we instantly did um, yes i mean the way the way i understand it is steve romanek is kind of regarded as a, a kook in the ufo community right Mm-hmm. So I think even in in that community, he's 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 not really regarded as um, well. I I I I don't want to use the word credible because that's too big a word. Perhaps his infamy is waning or something like that. Well, I I think actually he, what I'm saying is is he's regarded as a bit of a a bit counterproductive by people who do believe in UFOs because I'm sure there are people who believe in UFOs and. and but are, are quite reasonable, and they, they say, well, you know, there isn't any definitive proof that we can get, uh, you know, the general population to believe aliens with. I think there's, I think there's proof in this, blah blah blah. But people disagree. I think there are reasonable people who, who might believe this shit. Who, who must just look at stuff like the Steve Romanek story and go, ah. Oh. You know, I think a lot of people just simply have their back right the fuck up because of people like that. And yeah. like, if you let any of that stuff in, then you, you're lumping yourself in with people like that. And fuck knows, I'd, I wouldn't want to be of that kind of ilk. It's almost like the whole documentary could have been made by the government who are trying to hide what they're doing with aliens. And they were like, let's just put this out there and people will think that all these people are stupid. <laughs> it, you know, it, It's almost like a false flag because it's so it's so stupid. But... I mean, I want to make clear. I'm not suggesting it is. It's it's not. Um, so what we're doing right now is we're perpetuating our own conspiracies inside of this episode. That's yeah. very clever. Yeah. Did did they do any prep for this beforehand? No, they didn't. <laughs> Cross dimensional. <laughs> First black woman ever. <laughs> um, no context. No context for that. <laughs> well, even if it was con- even if people knew what that was, it's something that we it doesn't help our case. Really, <laughs> it's terrible. And the whole thing at the end of oh, the U.S. government planted child pornography on my computer uh, to discredit me and to silence me. It's like no, you've been gabbing on for about seven years before this ever happened. If they wanted to silence you and they're as bad as you say they are, you'd have just disappeared. You'd have just you know, they'd have just taken you into a helicopter, taken you 80 miles out to sea and thrown you out, you know. Yeah, but you, what well, you failed to realise that they did get, like, black ops to kind of assault him outside of a, <laughs> a Walmart that time. So, like, he, you know, because he had a rough childhood, right, because, you know, he had, he was, te- he says that he had, like, learning difficulties, so he would get bullied. So he learned how to fight a little bit and look after himself. So when these black ops guys comes out, he gives them, like, one, ch- one guy a chop to the neck and he just kind of drops down. The other guys ran... You know, stood behind him doing all this kind of like weird karate moves and shit like that, and you know he was he, like, he, "Yeah, so you think that's that's scary?" And I, could, and he could tell that really pissed him off. Just the most ridiculous thing, and and he he has this story about how he was assaulted by guy, you know, military guys, and you could tell they were black ops. You know, they had that look about them. <laughs> yeah, in like a yeah, in like a McDonald's car park, and and it shows you on screen for about two seconds, um, the police report, and I paused it, and the police report says. Mr. Romanek received light to no injuries. <laughs> and then he's there, he's there like saying, and I broke my wrist uh, whilst fighting these guys. Light to no injuries. Yeah, no, immediately follows this up. I didn't, I didn't stop to read it, but I was kind of fascinated. There was a p- police report at all, but it's immediately followed up of a picture of him like with bandages all over his nose and these really fucking heavy set eyes and stuff like that. And really pouring it on, like, I mean, obviously, presumably he's obviously had, you know, 
his wife to kind of doll him up with like eyeliner, eyeshadow and shit like that. But yeah, you see him like fucking give him in the, the hangdog fucking face with these, you know, bandages across his face. What do you think to his wife, the beaver lady? Is she an enabler or is she someone he's taking for a ride? Oh, so yeah, I, I was I was kind of going to bring that up. The, other than like conceit for the whole situation, the only thing I kind of felt was kind of pity for his wife, really. Because there's... Um, hmm. I, I do feel... She's putting up with a lot. I think she's obviously, she's obviously very gullible. I think she's kind of, I, she's in, in for a penny that one. But the, one of the one of his stories is obviously when he was up on the spacecraft, he was there. Yeah, he would always be there with another human being, and they were forced to mate and this, that, and the other. And he says that when he was doing one, of the, he was at one of these conventions, and he noticed someone familiar in the crowd. Yeah. Um, he never met before, and it was the. It's this woman that, that, that they they were being abducted together every single time. So after they f- find each other on Earth, they essentially start kind of getting this relationship together. And his wife is like, "Well, yeah, they've been through all this together. You know, as difficult as it is for a what you know, as the wife yeah. married to him, he's like, I have to understand." And it's like, he's bringing this, but he, he's parading this like right under your fucking yeah. nose, and you're just. You, you, you just, yeah, you're swallowing it. I mean, that's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's, yeah, he's, he's using it as an excuse. When you, when you, uh, when you talk to people who, who do stuff like that, you know, kind of like open relationships, they, they always have weird sort of excuses for it. And I, I you know, maybe it isn't always an excuse. Maybe it is mutual sometimes, uh, you know, and fine. But often I think it is an excuse. Uh, often it's kind of like, well, we've been married for six years. Uh, I've never mentioned this before, but uh, polyamory is really important to me. It's that sort of bullshit, right? It's just like, well, if I don't get to fuck someone else, I'm going to leave you and then I'm going to fuck someone else anyway. So you may as well let me go for it. It, pr- it pretty much is that, but it's it's on the kind of like Forrest Gump level of of cunning. You know, it's... To to a normal person, you can you can see it so easily from the outside, and it's it's so despicable. It is despicable. Um, I mean, you know, the well, the fact that he's he's got all these kind of like weird UFO fantasies where he's fathered all these children, and then it turns out he's got this stash of child porn on his computer. I I don't know. It, it makes sense in a horrible way. He's a fucking lunatic. He's a fucking lunatic. Yeah. And if this isn't a call to arms to have, you know, ran people up and have him fucking lynched, then I don't know what is. Well, I mean, he's one of these people that I could see, like, not being a paedophile and just and downloading those images for, like, a completely different reason. I mean, you know, do you remember... Um, Selling it, maybe. <laughs> well, appara- apparently he, he was charged with distribution, so I guess he was doing something like that. Oh, fucking hell. Well, I remember uh, our, our big fat friend... Uh, saying that he took loads of um loads of whatever loads of not viagra what well, what what would he take like a happy drug uh loads of valium or something and then going online and getting really interested in like child protection and like looking up child protection on wikipedia for ages and and kind of getting interested because he was you know he was high and he was right, he was okay. on a wikipedia search and then it ended with him typing child porn into google <laughs> uh, and immediately the sirens dropped down from the ceiling which he didn't know were installed apparently immediately the first thing that happened was uh, he typed it into Google uh, he clicked on a link and something came up where it said uh, your IP has been logged by the FBI we know exactly what you're doing and all of this <laughs> uh, you're fucking nick and he got someone to find he, he panicked and he got someone who knows computers to find out what was going on and they said it's not the FBI it's it's actually a religious group that puts stuff like this up and they they use this as a uh, as a deterrent to try and make people not look at poor at child porn anymore um which i'm, sh- I'm sure works really well so naturally, he's thinking, "Phew, I'm in the clear." Okay, child porn click. Well, Sorry, right. I cut you off. What was the end of this story? So he kind of found it was in the clear, and was that it? He put it to bed, or? Well, he never. Yeah, I mean, he's still walking free. I mean, he didn't. Oh. He didn't look at any. I don't think. I think he just clicked on a link. He wasn't afforded the opportunity, but something apparently exists within him. The way I, under- the way I understand it, it's it's not illegal. 
it's not illegal to look at it. It's illegal to download it. Oh, because, because you you know, I guess you could be browsing and it could just come up. I mean, I'm sure not. I'm sure you do have to find it, but yeah, I think we're in a bit of a tailspin here, dude. I think doctor. we might need to. I think we might need to talk about a little bit of Thumbcat to kind of San- wash off Sandy this. Hook. Let's talk about Sandy Hook. <laughs> <laughs> She's a television presenter, isn't she? But basically, guys, I think what what I'm saying at least is it's a horrible documentary, but it's entertaining. If you watch this with someone else. And you go in knowing that this is just utter bullshit. It's it's quite funny because it all hinges on this guy talking shit. It all hinges on yeah, and then and then I was in the garden, and then these two guys came up, and you know, uh, I mean, you know, I don't know where they were from, but you could you, you could tell by the way they looked, they were from the NSA Department Four. You know, <laughs> it's stuff like they that. had that vibe. They had that vibe. Basically, the the whole the whole attraction of this is him saying that in a way that couldn't convince anyone. He is one of oh. the worst actors in the world, and he's he's oh. got this this bullshit story that a really good actor couldn't sell, and he is trying mm. to sell it, and it's it's kind of funny, mm. in a kind of did... pathetic way. The lady's like starting to wake up, and she looks real happy, and she starts hugging them, mm-hmm. and then she looks at me, and I look at her, and then we're both really confused, and mm-hmm. they're just these kids, and they, they what come is... oh, hug my leg, and. Yeah, um, I do like some of the evidence. Whether you know how he's kind of presented that, I quite like. Um, one of the first things um, it talks about t- towards the beginning, because the sections are off into chapters, and one of the first ones, uh, first chapters is orbs. The first sight. <laughs> it's like, so dude, he would just see, dude, it's it's your fucking light reflecting on the glass. <laughs> <laughs> the m- yeah, yeah. But uh, um, he's, yeah, he, he, you get these uh, these like flashes of shit floating in the air or whatever. Uh, it looks like it's like two feet away, but it's in the sky. It's it's it blows your mind. Um, but you can't really see it, you know, with regular footage. So to you know, to clarify, it's there to really get oh, a good lock on yeah. it, right? Yes. Um, he's taken his fucking cheap little VHS fucking camcorder and he switched it to like the negative uh, like special effect and the embossed setting so it's just to kind of get to really kind of clarify the outlines and shit like that. So like, yeah, you can see it's there because look, it comes up on the special effect. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, he, he puts on this weird or not him, but the the director um mm-hmm. you know, John Sumple. Oh, I had to, I had to click. Sorry, I almost oh. forgot John Sumple's name then. Um, I oh, was that the director because I I remember like having a camcorder that, uh, that had the same exactly the same uh, settings. Oh okay, on it. I remember. All right, okay. Um, really, so it had an it emboss su- thing. That's weird. Yeah, yeah, and you couldn't do it um, after the fact. I don't think. Yeah, right. I if it, um, you'd have to record it like that. So now that I think of it, so you'd have to. It, it would show the footage and then with this 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 effect. Now maybe it's just the camera that I had, but logically he would have to record the same thing twice. See what I've done is I poked a hole in the whole. This house of cards is coming, coming the fuck down. Mm, that is that is extraordinary. And another thing he he does, the director, not Stan, is um, they have loads of photos, and it's like a photo of a field, and you can see the light on the grass of where where whoever took the photos stood, and then they turn the contrast all the way up and turn the brightness all the way up, and you can see, uh, you know, a, a, a two foot grey on the horizon. And it's yeah, just... with no like discernible features at all. No like arms or legs. It's just yeah, no, there. Because look, there's a little bit of a shine. It looks like those could be eyeballs. One of the fascinating things about it is you see like various photos of these aliens, but there's like no consistency with the prop that they've used. No. Uh, um, I mean, some of the stuff I saw um, looked exactly like these like inflatable toys that I remember yeah, exactly. winning at the fun fair like 20 years ago. Yeah, like two feet Fucking high. Hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I'm sure if you like twat it over something, it make it's got a whistle in it, so it makes a weird squeaking noise. You know, probably designed for your dog to eat or something like that. This is I mean, with all the different areas, that's kind of what led me to believe that like someone was fucking with him. Because if it was this guy Stan Romanek kind of like doing it himself, you'd think he would at least have the brains to use the same like toy every time. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I I was going through the same thing, thinking, is this is this him being deluded? But when the alien is in his house and it's looking around the corner, that's when I realised, oh no, he he's a bullshit artist because the way he reacts is just the most unbelievable shit. It's just kind of like, oh, frickin', a frickin' alien, man. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh what oh is gosh. that? What is that? Oh, God. 
Oh my god. What's that? Oh man, I'm so glad I got that on the camera. Like you either you either cry out or you run away or maybe you even fucking run after it. Yeah. You, do, you don't just those... film yourself going, "Oh frick." Yeah, it's one of those and it's like instant that fucking decision. It is instant. You you know, if if you're convinced that this is real, then surely you'd be terrified. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Another I'm thing they sure. do, again, this is a tiny little thing, like my grammar thing, but they, they have all these talking heads at the beginning, and then it's and then these people recur, and it's not until literally the fifty minute mark or something like that that captions appear telling us who they are. <laughs> I have no idea why you would make that decision. That's someone I bumped into at fucking Tesco. It's all stuff like ufologist. UFO propulsion expert. Yeah. Different, so I, different science doctor PhD man. So I just kind of want to mention that I think it's absolutely baffling and kind of incre- and wonderful that ufologist is in fact a real word. Um, I don't have anything to say beyond that. I just thought it was worth mentioning. Yeah, you might as well just call it foofologist, might you? <laughs> Wankstain, I think. <laughs> probably be Wankstain. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dr. Wankstain. <laughs> <laughs> You can't, uh, I do. you can't see it, but I'm actually a dinosaur wearing a mortarboard. <laughs> I'm actually a complex network of tiny thumbcats held up in a trench coat. Let me get masquerading my te- as a man. Let me get my teaching assistant, Quaffles, to help you with that conundrum. <laughs> Fancy a round of swaffling, anybody? Roar. Oh, swaffles in a portal. <laughs> that should have been the name of the movie. I, Shwa- you know. Swaffles in a portaloid. I do feel quite sorry for... Uh, the um, the professor they had a physics pres- professor. No, he, like, he's he's a bullshit artist as well. Is he? I looked him up. Yes. All oh, right. Okay. So anyway, there's a professor in the Stan Romanek story who is a professor of physics, and he's written a book, and it's called something like Other Physics or Unseen Physics, or it basically it's it's him explaining why magic works, and it's it's bullshit. Oh fucking hell! But he is a real professor. He just subscribes to bullshit because obviously Stan Romanek in one of his many trances you know kind of awoke from one and just started throwing down all these incredibly advanced equations so they naturally had to reach out to the local university to get answers to, and his response was like these are incredibly advanced you know the, the, the fact that he has no prior knowledge this is amazing clearly something has been implanted I wouldn't say there's such an industry making shit like this but I think that it is actually quite profitable to make documentaries like this because it's zero effort. Most of the most of the talking heads were recorded by someone else for something else and they obviously just got the rights to it. I mm-hmm. really do think that editing wise they did this in a weekend. Um and it's fucking on Netflix, so it must have made them some money. hmm You know, these people and um and, and like I say, I'm not gonna call it a an industry or anything, because I don't think there's enough. But there are there are a fair amount of documentaries about UFOs, and it's always it's always the same thing. We are going to show you compelling evidence, and it's never compelling evidence. There's always like one or two things where you think, okay, there might be something there. That's quite interesting, but it's it's completely smeared by ninety percent of things being that's a helicopter, that's a paper bag in the wind. <laughs> that's that's two feet away. Um, the the people behind the Steve Romanek story are people who want want to convince. You know that UFOs are real. They want to use that piece to convince and to uh, to push their agenda. But what they've actually done is they've made quite a compelling study of a low functioning narcissist. He had all these kind of fantasies about being the father of star children. He calls himself Starseed, and it turns out he's a paedophile. I, you know, I think there is a connection there. I don't think that's a coincidence. No, not at all. Like, I think it's quite interesting that they will have put that in the uh, put that in the edit. I, I feel like that that's something that they would need covered up. No. Well, they made it in 2013, and uh, you know, the whole paedophile thing didn't come out until later. So they went back to to put it in. Um, and you're right. You think you know you'd have just left it, really. For a documentary that's so earnest, it's a huge detriment to have something like that. Um, uh, pinned on at the end, really. I mean, at the end, it essentially says, "Oh, and by the way, um, don't judge him." But uh, St- Stan Romanek is is up for 
up for a prison sentence because he's been looking at kiddie porn and distributing kiddie porn. Now, before you make judge your judgment, here are a few headlines of people who've been caught putting child porn onto other people's computers. And you think, yeah, these people have been caught. Yeah. And we I mean, what a fucking right. get out. What a fucking get out. You can't do that because then anyone can be like, oh, yeah, I um, I spent 20 years uh, profiting from the misery of children. Someone else put it on my computer. Fuck off. <laughs> what a shameful thing to say. Well, maybe that's, you know, maybe that was the whole, the, the whole ruse, just an incredibly re- elaborate ruse for the last, you know, 15 years. Or um, he's been developing the story as a UFO nut, simply to kind of... Because uh, to, to he knows try, he'll be caught one day. Yeah, and try and use that to cut... Ca- Use that as a get out of jail free card. Quite foolishly, of course, because no one's going to you know, be like, "Oh well, you know, if they scrambled your brains up there, then I guess you, you know, you're allowed to touch kids." See, I, I keep trying to leave this, but there's, there's just so much that I keep going back to. The whole thing about him going onto someone's chat show and saying that he was going to do a uh, a lie detector test and then backing out before he did it. And saying he was ill, so he couldn't do it, but not saying what illness and things like that. Oh, for fuck's sake! The whole text-to-speech thing. Oh yes, I thought that was quite fascinating. Yeah, like Romanek is uh, is hounded um, uh, on the telephone uh, with these voice messages, um, and it's, it's clearly this computer. Uh, it's just this. Yeah, it's this computer voice. No, yeah, I do. I remember you, there was a point where you can obviously you could text landlines, and they would just have this voice read shit out for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, well. The, so in the um, in the film or in his in his fantasy, the woman calling him is called Audrey. I think the the piece of software he used, or at least the voice in that piece of software, is also called Audrey. So I think if you typed in Audrey text to speech, you could find the exact text to speech program that he used. Oh dear! You think he would? I, he'd try his hand at creativity, you know. He didn't even change her name. Victoria. Yes. Please tell Starseed. We are sorry. We did not mean to affect him that way. Because they hope to transition into the next step. Stan Romanik, you are not Starseed. You are a bullshit artist. You are a pedophile and proper twat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I like twat. that. Twat. Twat. You are a pedophile. <laughs> that's exactly how it is in the movie. Yeah, it is. That's yeah. That's identical. It's it's it's, it's identical. That is the voice that he uses. I, I mean, mean, I suppose the, the the shocking thing here is that in all this time, you think that that technology or that service would have progressed somewhat, uh, but it clearly hasn't. You can still use the same crap. No, I, I remember going to someone's house, uh, probably in about nineteen ninety eight. Um, and uh, there was a girl there on a on an old computer. Even for 1998, it was old, and she was writing a story for herself. You know, like like a, a hundred word story. You know, something kids do. And then at the end, she pressed play, and um, Stephen Hawking's voice read it out. And it was like, Emma was walking down the street, and she saw a cat in the street, and a car was coming, so without <laughs> thinking for herself, she jumped out and saved the cat. <laughs> and it was just... You immediately, like, like, paused it. It's like, I'm sorry, but this is, this is, uh, this is hilarious, this, naturally. This is derivative. I can only... I, can only I, I, I can't help but notice that you've written, written over a thousand words, so I have to listen to all of this. <laughs> I can't help but notice that you've written 25,000 words in this short story. <laughs> You seem to be dictating from this uh, this book in front of you, and that's got at least a good two hundred pages there. Um, but it was it was the most kind of hypnotic thing. It was awful, but it was it was hypnotic. Um, yeah, I, I mean that's the that's the fucking text to speech program he used. He didn't even change the name. Yeah, that's, well, that's a special level of incompetence, isn't it? Yeah, well, I don't know. We, we, I, f- I feel like with people like this, you know, they have a, a bizarre, twisted rationale for everything by virtue of what they're, you know, they're trying to kind of, of their argument. They can go as crazy as you like. So I, I'm sure if someone had broached them about it, which I'm sure someone must have done at some point, he would have been like, yeah, no, it's it's so simple. Like, that's how they kind of, that's how they fool you. Of course it's called ordering. Yeah. Why yeah. wouldn't it be? Well, uh, no, you, you're getting it wrong. Of course they're using this text-to-speech, but... Who's using the text-to-speech, Damien, huh? 
Can't be me because yeah. I'm answering the phone. I can't be on both ends of the phone. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. One of the things I quite I like the most is um, when he talks about the equations that he would see in this tra- uh, trance and one of the things that they list, and this is how they know it's bona fide, right? Um, so one of the things that he's writing down is the Drake equation, which is uh, the equation that calculates the likelihood of life on other planets. And, that kind yeah. of stuff. and he's listed it out like verbatim, but like right at the end, right? Because he's got insider knowledge, having been inducted, he just pastes on times 100. Yes. <laughs> His own version of the Drake equation times it, times is it by 100. And it's like the whole point of that equation is to prove that the universe is infinitely large. So there, you know, there will be aliens out there somewhere but you know the, 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 the odds so are so infinitesimally low it amounts it, it for all for all intents and purposes it amounts to absolutely nothing so yeah even if you were to times it by 100 it makes it makes no difference n- no odds yes uh, have you ever known anyone who's who's claimed to have seen aliens or anything yeah um my only kind of experience with people that really go in for ufo theories is with my grandfather um who was a failed rocket engineer. Um, I don't know if that has any bearing on the story, but I'll just... I mean, when you you say failed rocket engineer, that just makes me think like, and he's in prison because he killed 38 (laughs) people. (laughs) You know, when... Officer, there's a nutter in the park. Um, He looks... he looked inoffensive, but he seems to have an incendiary device. (laughs) An enormous, like, (laughs) 80-foot rocket. It's like a fucking V2. Yeah, but it's still cardboard. (laughs) But it does have real fucking propulsion technology in it. It will leave a crater. Wherever it, wherever <laughs> no, it, just, it either lands or, or just oh, it, it doesn't take off. It just instantly fucking vaporizes. It just takes out, like, you know, I, I would say a good, like, half mile. Now, when you say failed rocket engineer, he was part of a, a rocket engineering team. It wasn't yes. like... You see, when you say failed rocket engineer, I could imagine Steve Romanek describing himself as a rocket engineer and a mathematician. Y- you've got to give him a bit more credit than that. He was on a national space program. Yes, yeah, and no, I'm I'm doing him a great disservice. He worked for the uh, Blue Streak uh, program, which uh, was Britain's attempt to join the space race, which failed. So he's it, not necessarily I mean, failed. The, the whole problem was that Martin Lawrence was the lead astronaut. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Anyway, so um, he in his latter years um, really got into this stuff. I used to see like books peppered over. Um, like his house, like cool, cool stuff like Chariots of the Gods and stuff like that, and loads of stuff about ancient astronaut theories and things like that. But okay. there was, um, he always had his suspicions, he always wanted to believe. And there was one day he comes down uh, to visit um, visit us, and he brings his camera with him. He's just like, I've, I've seen it, I've finally fucking seen it. And he's, um, he shows us this footage of uh, him in his little uh, workshop, and he's looking out the window, and he's zooming in and out, and he sees this floating orb. Um, at the you know at the far you know in the skies at the far end of the uh, the colossus where he would live, and he could never place what it was you know because um, you know it all kind of checked out in terms of perspective because obviously you could only see it when you zoomed really really far in because right. it was tiny so far away naturally and obviously when you zoomed out you couldn't see anything and he was like he was absolutely convinced one hundred percent and he's like you know. Um, he was talking to my dad, like, so, you know, I've seen, I know you've kind of looked down your nose at me for liking this stuff, but here it is. You see, you see, you see. And uh, well, my dad's not buying it naturally. And well, no one is, of course, but, but we kind of humor him um, as best we can. And he kind of goes away, for, you know, very, very, very happy. Uh-huh. And then he comes back next week and he's like gotten to the bottom of the fucking, uh, uh, gotten to the bottom of this mystery. And, um, and what and so was it? What was it? It was like a, a, he, a, a floating orb. It was a floating orb, like completely nondescript, no, n- no surface features or or anything like that. Just, right. c- just a sphere, like a, a, a gray. It was a black sphere. Yeah. Um, nothing. You couldn't discern anything from it. Um, it was very mysterious. Um, but like, it was literally the next weekend he comes down, and, uh, and we kind of follow up all coy like, and you can say to. You can see that he's figured it out and he's kind of hanging his head in shame a little bit. So, like, what was it, Grandad? What was it? And I was like, I figured it out. Um, it was, um, turns out it was a speck of paint on my window. And that's why you could only see it when I would zoom right in. <laughs> like a tiny speck of paint. Absolutely tiny, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, he, he worked it out and he, he didn't fucking rationalise it. He didn't, it wasn't like, ah, but where did the paint come from? Yeah, yeah but the, the thing, what, the interesting thing was, because I guess he, like, would look out of... Um, his window with a video camera all the time, which you know, I don't think we kind of asked enough questions of that 
um, that behavior. But, yeah. Uh, uh, he would build like model trains in this uh, his workshop. And there was, there's paints paint splattered everywhere. And I feel, feel like if you looked closely at the window, you'd have seen you know, there's paint all over it, not just that glue and all, all, all kinds of marks from all kinds of like materials. It, it feels like he should have like happened upon you know this sighting a long time before this, really. Mm, that that is um that is bizarre. I mean I've seen a UFO which was like that, like an orb thing, and it well it was a UFO, I couldn't identify it, but I don't think it was aliens. <laughs> yeah, it's good that you clarify that. I, I did I, I did see a, a shiny orb which seemed to be some distance away just kind of floating above a city. Um but you know, it could have been a drone. I'm surprised. Uh, yeah, I, I imagine they must account for like most kind of reported sightings. I think. And if you actually, you know, look weather balloons up online, I mean, you can totally see how some weather balloons could look like flying saucers. Some of them are very strange shapes. You know, I know, I know, it's a you know a whole kind of trope to be like, oh, it's a weather balloon, lol. But ah, seriously, I think that most of them probably are. Hmm. I like hearing when people say, oh, it's swamp gas. Swamp I don't gas. know what to expect expect with that and how that works, but yeah, okay. It wasn't anywhere near where you saw it. It's just you've been huffing paint. <laughs> yeah, um, too many bad habits sniffing glue. But I don't. I don't think personal responsibility weighs into this at all. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think w- one of the things that does kind of frustrate me about the whole Steve Romanek thing is, I. It's not like I believe in UFOs or aliens, but I believe it could be a possibility. I don't think like, oh, they're here and they're abducting people. I don't think that. But I think that, you know, maybe, you know, some pilots have seen something which is weird. Maybe that's a, you know, maybe that's a a military prototype. Maybe it is an alien craft or something. But I don't, I you know, I think more than 99% of accounts are either bullshit or explainable. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know what you'd hope to achieve by convincing people, really. I mean, you know, if aliens are here and they're in the skies and they're doing things, they clearly don't want to make contact with us publicly. They haven't <laughs> landed anywhere, you know. They haven't landed in Times Square and come out and said, oh, we're here. You know, if ever you see anything in the sky hovering about, that's us, don't worry about it, we're just watching you. They haven't done that. They don't want to make contact with us. I mean... And if if they're aliens and they're here and they've got flying saucers, they're you know thousands and thousands of years ahead of us. What can we do? You know, it's out of our hands, really, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So they clearly come here and made a t- realize they made a terrible mistake. It's a terrible mistake with Steve Romanek. Our algorithm is all wrong. This guy isn't clever. <laughs> Through mir- miraculous ma- mathematics that we can't, you know, comprehend, they managed to predict the existence of Steve Romanek and have co- traveled the galaxies to make contact with this one person alone. Now we, we course, have to set up have now because in five hundred really. years there's going to be some fat white nutter living in the woods who is the key to all of this. <laughs> oh I, yeah, I, I don't understand. I imagine for like. You know, forms of life like that, if if they existed and were capable of such things, I mean, the pe- someone like that could at best be considered like a house bet to them in best case scenario, right? There's, he, he would have no intrinsic value to a form of life like that. Yeah. And so that's what always kind of gets me about these accounts of uh, these sightings. Like, there's like such an unbelievable arrogance kind of woven through all of them that you would really be, you know, you'd be like, the center point of something like that. It's, it's absolutely fucking insane. I hope he dies in prison. I, but that's not, mm, okay. That's somewhat of an ed- editorial there. We don't need to, you know, we don't need to go swing with that. Kind of seems a bit bitter. <laughs> <laughs> in September, Lisa Romanek created a 90 day uh, funding campaign, a public funding campaign, with the goal of raising £30,000 for her husband's appeal. That's got to be a hard ask, hasn't it? My husband's yeah. in jail for distributing child pornography. I need money to get him out. You might recognize him from this documentary. She raised 3.3 thousand. <laughs> she raised like just over 10%. Um, mm, I'm surprised she raised anything, to be honest. 
Yeah, I mean, what happens? Does she have to give the money back? Because it's obviously useless for the end uh, end goal. So yes, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was she just, just absconds with it. Yeah, maybe it was just. Oh, my husband is in jail for being a paedophile. Um, can I have thirty grand to make me feel better? <laughs> so I would probably I would give to that. You know, that, that's <laughs> that's much more uh, that's much more understandable. Yeah, I yeah. I don't. I don't think I would give to it, but I'd, I'd be much more sympathetic to it. Like, yeah, here's here's some money. Leave him now. <laughs> Cut all ties. Uh, do we have any existing. anything else to say about the Steve Romanek story? Uh, I don't think we do. I think that's that's put a nice little bow in it. I think. Um, well, next week we'll be talking about conspiracies in general. Uh, so not the Steve Romanek stuff, but but things like lizard people, moon landings, Paul McCartney, all in a nice big blender. We'll f- Since we mentioned there. it here first, we'll make sure that we don't touch any of those stu- subjects with a 12 foot fucking pole. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so next time, uh, we'll be talking about that. See you then. Thanks very much for joining us. And again, thank you for all that ludicrous fan art. Uh, keep it coming in. Um, we'll we'll be doing another fan art episode in the next two to three years. So, <laughs> see you soon. <laughs> see you soon. See you, see you soon, and, and yeah, see your art up online soon. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, we can make your dreams come true. <laughs> yes, if your dreams are extremely limited. It's to be an outsider artist. Ta-ra. Ta-ra.